All right, what's up guys, it's Mr. Orditi, and today's video is going to be talking about Katie's farming. So, it's a beginner guide for Katie's, but I'm just gonna say this right now. Don't farm Katie's if you're not, to at least like champion RTA, just keep farming Banshee and Wyvern, and just get the best gear you can from that first, because Katie's is hard. So Katie's is going to drop four different sets. I'm gonna show a couple of my characters to start this video that are on Katie's gear. So, first off, we're gonna go ahead and start with Penetration Set. So, Penetration Set. Very, very good. This is the kind of gear that once you get to end game and you want to min-max your characters, end game PvP, and you're trying to break through those bulky, bulky teams, you want pen set. So pen set is the best of all the sets, in my opinion. When you're attacking with a single target attack, penetrates defense by 15%. They buff that, it used to be 10%. But 15% is amazing. If it's only for single target attacks, so meaning only half the characters in the game, basically, can use it efficiently. So... I use it on Spectre Nebria. It's my favorite build that I've done for her. I build infinite damage with Pensa because on her first turn, she has a single target attack on her S1 because you have an S3 yet. So you get the bonus for your S1. Then you do your S3. You do infinite damage. Normally can kill just about any character in the game that isn't like a full-on tank. And it's it's very nice play style. But other characters that can use it, obviously, Top Model Luica, uh, C-Dom could use it. Really, there's so many possibilities for Pensa. But all the characters that cannot use Pen Set, they just released a new set that is Torrent Set. So Torrent Set, I always call it Vortex Set for some reason. But Torrent Set, it decreases your health by 10%. It's the only set in the game that gives you a negative stat as of right now. So on Torrent Set, it makes it to where whenever you attack, it no matter what kind of attack you do, whether it's single target or AoE, you're going to get a 10% damage multiplier after. So getting that 10% damage multiplier after is huge because it's just it's a lot of damage so a lot of the times whenever you're getting any kind of damage increase it's going to be calculated in the initial damage but having it calculated after creates a much higher it makes it a much more valuable multiplier i guess is the way to explain it but on rb getting if say you get greater attack buff you deal your damage and it's going to add 10 percent to it after that's huge but getting the extra HP down on a character like Arbiter Vildred or a character that doesn't, it's, their job is not to survive, it's worth it. It's completely worth it. There's so many characters it's worth it on. Bloodblade Corinne would be amazing on it. I have mine on our Fectra's Weirdo build. Um, it's not like enough any kind of stat, but having Torrent on her, if I could do like, if, if you could do triple Torrent Effectra's BBK, that'd be insane. That'd be really cool, but it'd be hard to reach your Effectra's threshold. But there are just so many possibilities for the set that... We're still learning. It's a newer set, but it's worth going for. But you don't get any stat bonus from it. You actually get negative stat from it. So it, it, it's hard for right now. But almost any character can use it. So if you do roll two really good torrent pieces, it's only a two-piece set, then definitely worth going for. But penetration, again, Remnant Violet's really good on pen. Uh, most Almost any character is worth putting pen on if you can get past the stat threshold for it. Next up, I'm going to go ahead and talk about Injury Set. Injury Set is very, very good, but very few characters can use it. The main two characters that you ever see Injury on are Bellion and Alencia. Alencia on Injury is amazing now because they changed Injury recently to where after attacking, your greatest target's max HP equal to up to 6%, and that's if you're doing a AoE attack. If you're doing single target attacks, you're going to be getting the full benefit of up to 12%. So Alencia, every time she has one, she is going to be hitting two times meaning that you can get up to 24% injury damage every time she takes a turn, which is, it, it's amazing. And you don't have to do much damage. Personally, I would like to speed my Alencia up a lot because the more turns she takes, the better off you're going to be because you're going to be getting more injury out faster. And if you're drafting against in, or health, HP scaling damage dealers, the sooner you take their HP down, the less damage they're going to do. So it's really good. But on Bellion, she has so many changes to counterattack with Elbrus that, and she's AoEing. And her regular attack has a chance to a or do the normal attack and then AOE. So you can get up to 12% just on your turn if you soul burn. You guaranteed get it. Or S3 is an AOE, meaning you're going to get 6%, uh, up to 6% on everybody. The big weakness of injury set is going to be barriers. If the enemy team has barriers, you don't get injury through the barriers. So keep that in mind. Uh, this is something you don't want to farm a ton for. So I would not personally push it. And the last set, I think it's the worst by far going to be revenge set so revenge set is currently just not that great the meta's too fast everything whenever you play a player you're going to be finishing that match very very quickly so in or it's it's okay revenge set 
on tanks is fine. Tanks and Soul Weavers, it technically should be best in slot if you have the play style for it, if you have really bulky team. But a lot of the times you just lose so fast, you don't get the benefit from it. And losing out on 8% speed um, just from the set bonus. So you start your turn extra slow or start your the match extra slow. It's it's not the greatest. And there are no revenge set damages that can be used viably. I have amazing revenge set gear for a damage dealer. Probably my highest gear score pieces are revenge set for a full set. And there's nothing to put it on. I've tried everything. And every single character I've tried to put it on has let me down. It just it just doesn't do the same as speed set or having the extra 60% critical uh, hit damage from destruction set. There's just so many... Just the other set bonuses just make it just almost obsolete. But if you get it, you can put it on tanks and maybe, maybe make some work out of it. But that is a couple character examples. And next, I'll go ahead and go to the hunt. And we'll talk about some team comps and just a little bit more about it. So this is the hardest hunt in the game by far. It is so, so annoying to do. I hate doing it. It takes forever, every single run. Even if you have a one-shot team, it still takes a ridiculously long amount of time. So whenever you are doing Katie's, personally, I would say extract everything. Do not sell a single piece of gear for when you're doing Katie's. Extract it and use your blue boxes, if you can, for right side gear. I would honestly mostly craft right side gear from Katie's and extract it. And then whenever you have these uh, left side things, I would use almost all these for Katie's. Uh, once you get to that point, before you get to that point, I would still use it for like Wyvern, Banshee, get some extra counter pieces, finish up Banshee, Banshee sets, stuff like that. But once you are getting to a point where you want to min-max and Katie's, start saving these, using these for the Katie's, and then uh, I would use the blue boxes for right side gear because getting right side good pen set and torrent set pieces will dramatically boost your account. So that is my personal take on boxes and how to like utilize your Katie's resources. So I'm gonna go ahead and talk about the Katie's hunt real quick and then I'll show some team comps. So I won't go in and show like exact team to use. Uh, well, I kind of will, but I won't show you like the builds for the characters. They're gonna be pretty self-explanatory once I go over everything. So the first part of the hunt, you're gonna go in and you're going to have this boss. This, this mini boss has like 70,000 HP, I think. Whenever you are attacking it, if he has a debuff on him, Every time you hit him from there, he will counterattack you. Once he counterattacks you, he has a chance to stun you, which is super annoying. It makes this first part take forever if you get stunned. So just keep that in mind. It's a very, very annoying part. But you're going to end up debuffing him because you have to have debuffs for the second part, unless you're doing some kind of one-shot comp. But if you're doing a one-shot comp, I don't think you would really be watching a beginner guide for it. <laughs> so I'm going to guess most of you are going to be doing like the standard comps, which is what I do. I use ML Kiwana for it. But this, this part of the fight's pretty annoying. But it's easy. It, he doesn't do much damage. It's it's not a hard part. It's just like a time annoyance. So next up, this is the main boss. This is Katie's. So whenever he attacks on his normal S1 attack, he is going to always proc a dual attack. So he's going to pull one of the other things, and he will be doing injury damage to your characters every time he does it. So once he hits you, he's going to boost his combat readiness by 20%, which is super annoying. So once he boosts his combat readiness by 20%, All right, so this is the main boss, Katie's. So every time there are going to be two little enemies behind him that whenever they do their or their S1 attack, they're going to pull him in for a dual attack. Whenever he attacks you, he's going to be causing injury damage. And the injury damage stacks up and it gets super annoying. But you also have a counter. Every time you hit him, you have a counter that goes up. When that counter goes up, he does more damage to you and it goes up to five. But whenever your character uses a non-attack skill... It resets that counter to zero, and he will then target the character that has the highest counter, or the little enemies in him will always target the character that you, on your board with the highest counter. If two of your characters have the same number, it's random. So just keep that in mind. You are going to want to use characters with non-attack skills, and then on the main tank character, which hopefully you have Rowana. Rowana is the MVP of this. If you have Rowana, then turn Rowana's skills off for this hunt. And then she will eventually always have the highest counter throughout that. But just watch out for injury damage and watch out for your counters because if you get too high, you're going to fail this hunt occasionally if you like get some random dual attacks on your 
character that has a non-attack skill, your main damage skill, like say Sermia, if your Sermia counter or gets multiple hits and does like a dual attack, sometimes she'll get targeted and she'll just get wiped out and you're going to fail to hunt. This hunt's very, very annoying. Next up, attacks enemies inflicting injury. So this is injury. About 3% every time a skill is used. Penetrate targets defense, ignoring any effects. So it does pen penetrate defense too. So it does a lot of damage once your counter gets higher. So this... It's going to be, once you first enter the match, he's going to immediately use Earthquake. He's going to restrict and speed down you. You're going to want a cleanser. You're going to want, like, Tamarin or someone to cleanse yourself. Uh, ML Kiwana also has a cleanse on her S2, which is really nice. Or, or I guess it's her S3. She doesn't have an S2. Her S2 is a passive. But once your Kiwana can cleanse all this, Tamarin can cleanse all this. But restricting and being speed down sucks. Restricting Katie's is huge, which ML Kiwana also has restrict. But restricting him is huge because he gets a lot of CR when he's dual attacking with the targets behind him. But and he does injury on the 7%. And, uh, he also heals himself when he uses this. Every attack he recovers health of the caster and grants the caster stackable increase attack. So he gets stronger and stronger every time he uses that too. So if you are in a point where there's a lot of times that you'll get to a point where the only character alive on your team is a soul weaver and you are invincible and cannot die. And that is the worst. And that's what makes this hunt take so long is if you get an unlucky run, you have it running on auto, and your Tamarin stays alive because all your other characters got their counter too high and end up dying. She'll sit there and stay alive forever, but she will eventually die, thankfully, to this because it keeps getting him more attack. Next, Demon's Armor. Takes only 50% of damage from skills that increase damage proportion to max health, meaning no Daydream Joker. The only, the only boss that you can't use Daydream Joker on are in terms of hunts, which sucks. You are better off using... Like border coin, so, uh, something that increases your attack over time. You can use symbol of unity on your main damage dealer. You can still use daydream joker. Actually, I think I still do use daydream joker. But losing out on the like potency of how much benefit or damage you get out of it really sucks. So if the caster has four or more debuffs, this is also important. Then uh, when someone's turn and dispels all debuffs, increase attack and defense for two turns. If you have too many debuffs on your team, you need to change your team because if this procs at all, you're you're screwed. It sucks. Lastly, danger level. When attack increases danger level. So this is what I was talking about with the counter. You're going to have your danger level. Uh, every time you hit him, it goes up by one. You are going to take more damage the higher your thing is, and whoever has the highest danger level is going to be who is attacked. So that's why you need non-attack skills to reset that. So that is the boss. Next up, we're going to go ahead and show some teams. That's my team that I, I use. I don't have them geared right now because I have not been farming Katie's because you, do <laughs> you don't want to farm Katie's. So... This is what I use. It's it's not bad. It takes like three minutes. Sometimes the run goes bad, though. Like I said, maybe Koana will dual attack with some of these, and her counter will get too high, and she'll get wiped out. Um, I use Koana on Rage Set whenever I do this. Uh, this is my defense breaker. I have Rowana skills turned off, and I actually have Rowana on counter set, because having Rowana on counter set, if you get that counter, it'll make her tick go up higher, meaning that it adds consistency, because the enemies will all attack her versus targeting your other characters. So having counter set on her is nice because you also get a barrier every time you have one, which keeps her alive for even longer. So that is my Rowan. You don't need good counter gear. You don't need counter gear personally, but uh, or you don't need counter gear, but that's personally what I do, just to try to add consistency to this hunt. Uh, then Asaria is going to go ahead and have her S3, which gives two debuffs. It gives unbuffable and defense break, and her S1 gives defense break. And then ML Kiwana gives restrict. That's my three debuffs. So if you have characters that give more than three debuffs, change your team. Because if you land all four, you're screwed. So make try to cap out on your three three debuffs. So you can't use Song of Stars on Asaria and give target debuff because then if you land everything, you're screwed. So I believe I use Sword of Judgment for extra S1 procs to hire my defense break chance. So that is my team. Here are some other teams. I'll just talk about them real quick. So in these other teams, you see Asaria is the number one character used. Uh, I say Rowana is the MVP, but this area is very, very important for this. So as you can see, you can use characters such as Lorena. This is a team that is designed to kill the boss extremely fast. Um, the faster you kill it, the less RNG and stuff you have to worry about. But this team will probably fail quite a bit, if I'm being honest. But this is like the most budget team you could probably do. So this isn't too bad. Almost all the team comps you're going to see are going to take very specific characters, and there's not much you can change out and replace. That's why I say this is a very in-game hunt, and do not even bother worrying about farming this until, one, you can do KD-13, and two, you have a ton of other gear already set up. So this next team is a pretty standard team. It has uh, Saria, Tamarin, ML Sermia, and ML Kiwana. This is a high damage, pushing out as much damage as possible team. 
I don't like this team as much because there's less consistency to it. Yes, it might be faster, but when you do fail a run, your Tamarin's going to stay alive for a very long time. It's going to take forever for you to uh, lose because Tamarin's always going to have the lowest counter uh, on her because she every she she resets that counter every turn because she does S1, and then S2 is a non-attack skill. Next up, Violet's pretty good for this hunt. Serum is pretty good for this hunt. This is a pretty good team. The only problem I have with this team is you have no cleanse. So I use Tamron on Wondrous Potion Vial to every turn at least get one cleanse off. And whenever she has threes, I get a cleanse. This team and this, as you see, ML Kwan, like I said, has cleanse on her. And she gives speed buffs. Speed buffs are really nice. But this team right here, no cleanse. This is kind of kind of rough, but you see quite a few people use it. This is a one-shot style team. So this is, if you don't have the gear for this, you're not going to be able to do it. Rank 5, this team's not bad, but as you see, Lionheart Sermia, ML5, she is amazing for this hunt. This is a pretty solid team, just like the team up here. You're just switching out the two. This is another style of really fast comp. So you're going to have to experiment. If you are wanting to get into KDs, go through this. Look at, just look through, see if there's anything you can build. You can try Seaside Balloon. A lot of people try that on, like, Bloodstone. And um, just and because she has a good chance of defense break, she can put target. And then uh, that's your three debuffs. She has defense break target. And then your unbuffable defense break comes from this too. So that's your three max debuffs. So this team, you could not use ML Kwan instead of Sermia. You would have to use Sermia or ML Sermia or something like that. You can't use Violet because Violet attack downs on his S1, which has a good chance to not land it, but it's still risky. But there's a lot of risk that goes on this hunt. So a couple of other characters you can try to use are ML Lulica. That's another ML5. Shocker, right? So really the only three-star damage dealer that gets much use is Lorena because Lorena can just put out so much so much damage. So she's she's kind of the go-to cheap character. There's also Mercenary Helga. She's not bad. The Hawk's pretty good, but another five-star character. This team looks terrible. I don't know how this worked. This guy beat it like two times and never farmed it again. They hated their life. Uh, but yeah, so that's basically how the team comps are. Camille is there to bring it as another dual attacker. So if you're wondering what her, Camilla, if you're wondering what she's there for, she's going to continuously uh, dual attack for you and pull Sermia, which is good. It's to try to beat the boss as fast as possible. But if you miss a single defense break on this, it's kind of a kind of a sketchy team to try to run. So that the team that I use is for safety. <laughs> but I also I was one of the first Katie's farmers. When KD 11 first came out, I was like one of the only people that farmed it enough to... Uh, get the sets and try them out. And all the sets back then were horrible. It was the biggest waste of like 200 leaves I've ever done. But like I said, just go through this, see if there's any teams you can do. Uh, I'm not going to show my team. This is just an introduction to Katie's style video. Just see if they're maybe worth farming for you. But I hope you got something out of this. Hopefully I, if you're not to the point of farming Katie's, hopefully I just talked you out of it because there is no point to waste your time. Just keep playing the game normal. Keep stacking gear. Keep collecting characters until you can make that team and make it a lot easier because it's not worth trying to force Katie's. So that's all I got for this video. Thank you guys for watching. It's been Mitchell or DD, and I will see you all in the next one. Peace out.